can Saul become the perfect partner for Paul Pogba at Mourinho's Manchester United? Hello everyone and welcome to the What If League. Today's episode is going to be about uh, what if uh, Saul Nige has been purchased by Manchester United to partner uh, Paul Pogba and uh, Nemanja Matic as well as the rest of the midfielders uh, and uh, the other squad members at uh, Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. There have been uh, some talks that uh, Saul Nige has is one of the primary targets for Jose Mourinho in uh, summer 2018 and uh, I was uh, very interested in this transfer as well since I believe that uh, he has the profile to play very successfully in a Jose Mourinho team and uh, would be very suitable with the rest of the midfielders in the squad. So I decided to, to do this transfer in the middle of February. The, the sum for the transfer is 90 million pounds, which is quite a lot. I'm not sure if maybe I overdid it a bit, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to fast forward until the end of the first season to see how does he perform. And uh, afterwards, uh, then I'm going to fast forward uh, three more seasons into the future. Here we are now at the end of the first season, the 2nd of June 2018. Manchester City were crowned champions with 90 points, 11 more than second place Manchester United. Liverpool and Tottenham completed the top four and uh, at the bottom of the table we find Huddersfield, Southampton and West Brom that all, all have been relegated. It's quite surprising to me that uh, both Huddersfield and Southampton were relegated but uh, this is what the game decided to, to do after the calculations. Now, what we were very interesting to see is what happened with uh, Saul, so let's have a quick look at him. And uh, I forgot um, a very important uh, element here. He, we, uh, when he moves in the middle of February, he, there is no possible way to register him for the Premier League, so he was not eligible to play any games. In turn, this meant that he only played in two cup games and uh, he did not perform uh, especially well in those, but uh, that's not really important because we're going to see how uh, he's going to impact Manchester United in the next three seasons. So stay with me, now I'm going to fast forward three more years into the future and we're going to check what happens with uh, Saul's performance at Manchester United. Here we are now at the 2nd of June 2021 and before we get uh, started with Manchester United and Seoul I just want to quickly show you some other things. Uh, for example, Arsene Wenger is now the manager of France and his job is very insecure. So he has been replaced at Arsenal uh, by Jorge Jesus, which is not that surprising but on the other side uh, for him to lead France and uh, to be very insecure is very surprising to me at least. We can also see that Mark Hughes is in charge of Leicester and Zinedine Zidane is leading Manchester City so those are also quite uh, interesting changes. Uh, Michael Laudrup is uh, the manager of Burnley. So a lot of things have changed in the meantime. But now uh, let's have a look at uh, what is happening with Manchester United and Saul. Just before we do that I see Sean Dyche is uh, leading England and Jurgen Klopp is the, manager of, uh, is the head coach of Germany. So first of all, let's see the Premier League table, what happened in the first season, Manchester City were champions, then next year Manchester United were champions with 92 points, which is 14 more than second place Chelsea, Manchester City and Liverpool completed the top 4. In the third season Manchester United were champions again with 88 points, 6 more than Manchester City, Arsenal and Chelsea completed the top 4, and in the last season here Chelsea were crowned champions, uh, they are on level with Manchester United, 84 points each, but have better goal difference, 43 goals positive against 36 for the Red Devils. Manchester City and Liverpool completed the top 4 that year. Now having a quick look at Manchester United we can see that Jose Mourinho is apparently still their manager, Victor Lindelof is their new captain while Alexis Sanchez is the vice captain. The key player here is Paulo Dybala, so they have bought Paulo Dybala uh, two seasons ago for 85 million pounds and apparently he's performing quite well. Let's have a quick look at the tactic screen where we see that uh, they have also bought Yannick Carrasco and uh, also Angel Correa and Villian. So uh, all three attacking midfielders are new. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, some, other, uh, some other players as well. Cristian Pavon is here, Rafael Guerrero is here and uh, Palencia, Sergi Palencia. I'm not familiar with that uh, player, but apparently he is a right fullback that Jose Mourinho has liked and has uh, purchased. So now let's see what happened with Saul. 
There he is, media description, world class midfielder and his value has now climbed up significantly, 73 million pounds, which is uh, a lot more than the 41, uh, which was the automatic evaluation after his transfer. We can see that he has performed very, very well, 7.07, .07, which is not the best, but still very impressive. Uh, he has played a lot of games in the last three seasons. In his first full season, he did not play very well, particularly 6.77 is not uh, really impressive. He managed to to record five assists and only two goals. Then in the next next season, four goals and nine assists. And in his last season, two goals and seven assists. So Saul is probably struggling a bit to adapt. And uh, apparently, with all the new transfers that Jose Mourinho have done, uh, he's not really being able to establish himself as an undisputed first team player. Let's have a quick look at the transfers made by Manchester United now. First we have, of course, so that was the only transfer in the first season. Then we have Domenico Crescito and uh, Dominic Zoboslai. Zoboslai, this is an Hungarian player. He is currently on loan at Coupe America, so he was a very young player when he was bought. In the outgoing section we see Daily Blind, Marcus Rojo were sold, as well as Cameron Bortwick Jackson. Timothy Fosomenso was sent out on loan. Then the next season, a lot of incoming players. Stuart Armstrong on a free, so he's a Scottish player. He has already been sold to West Ham after that. Paulo Dybala was bought there. Rafael Guerrero, Villian. Lucas Mecha, a German that was playing for Manchester City apparently, and he was then bought by Manchester United on a free transfer. So, very, very interesting transfers. You can see a lot of players that uh, Mourinho decided to bring to Old Trafford on the outgoing section. Nobody interesting. We see Dean Henderson has been sold. Stuart Armstrong that has been brought on a free transfer. He was sold uh, the very same season, so six months later only. To West Ham, uh, as well as the reserve goalkeeper Joel Pereira. Matteo Dermian left on a free transfer to Porto the same year. And then let's see what happened in the last season. Mauro Tassi was brought from Lanús. Yannick Carrasco from Bayern Munich. Sergi Palencia and Claude Ajapong from Sassuolo. I'm not familiar with that player as well. An Italian right fullback. On the other side, uh, the team has been uh, left by Sergio Romero, Mariano, who has been brought two seasons ago, Domenico Crescito as well has been sold, Luke Shaw has been sold to Leicester for for very, very um, cheap sum here, 11.5 million pounds. I would expect much more. Hugh Jones was also sold to Watford. So those were the transfers made by Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. You can see the current uh, playing playing squad and uh, Saul apparently has not been the in undisputed midfield part partner of Paul Pogba. I think with that uh, now the only thing left is to see what has happened in the cup competitions in England and afterwards the European competitions before we finish this experiment or at least part one of this experiment. So first off the FA Cup first instance was won by Burnley, then Manchester United won the competition in 2018-19, Watford and Manchester City won the next two. Let's see what also happened in the League Cup and uh, who was uh, victorious there. Tottenham, Arsenal, Chelsea and West Ham were the last four champions here and uh, the funny thing is that all those teams are from London, so four London teams won the League Cup in the last four seasons in the Football Major 2018 simulation. Now switching our attention to the European competitions and first is the Europa League where in the first season Lyon were uh, victorious after defeating Barcelona in the final 2-1 after extra time. Lyon managed to qualify for that game after eliminating Villarreal, Zenit St. Petersburg and Red Bull Leipzig, oh apologies, and Atalanta in the second knockout round on penalties. In the next season, the Europa League went to London after an all-London derby. Arsenal defeated Chelsea 2-1 in the final. Arsenal managed to qualify after beating Burnley in the semi-final 5-0 on aggregate. Uh, the, before that, they eliminated Hertha Berlin and uh, the French Nice. On the other side, we can see that there was another all-London uh, all, all derby in the semi-final where Chelsea eliminated Tottenham. So apparently the English teams were very dominant in the Europa League that season. The semi-finals were all English and uh, then we had, of course, an English winner. In the next season, Roma were victorious after defeating Dortmund uh, after penalties and 2-2 in the regular time. Roma qualified for that game after eliminating also Leverkusen, Shakhtar Donetsk and the English Tottenham. 
In the last season now, Tottenham were crowned champions of the Europa League after beating Milan in the final. Tottenham also eliminated uh, another Italian team, Lazio. Before that, Hertha Berlin and uh, another Italian team, Fiorentina. So three Italian teams on the way to the final and uh, the uh, trophy here for the London Spurs. Going one level up to the highest competition in European football, the Champions League. The first season the title went to Madrid. After an all Madrid final, Atletico Madrid managed to beat their neighbors Real Madrid 2-1 in the final. Atletico also eliminated Juventus, Tottenham and uh, Paris Saint-Germain on their way to the trophy. In the next season they managed to defend their title, beating another Spanish team in the final. This time it was Barcelona against them and they were victorious 3-1 in that final game. In the semis they eliminated Manchester City, before that they beat Dortmund and Liverpool. In season number 3, Atletico Madrid again managed to play the final but this time they lost to their city neighbors of Real Madrid. Real Madrid were victorious after 2-1 uh, in extra time. Real also eliminated Monaco, Juventus and Milan in their way to the trophy. And in the final season here, che Manchester United were victorious in the Champions League against Chelsea. There was an no all-English final, Manchester United uh, beat them 2-0. Previously in the semi-finals they eliminated Atletico Madrid on penalties, Monaco in the quarter-finals on away goals and Sevilla in the first knockout round on penalties again. Now finally, before we close this experiment, uh, part 1 of this experiment, I want to see the Ballon d'Or winners for the last years and we see that those work. Lionel Messi in the first two seasons and then Cristiano Ronaldo in the final season. Paulo Dybala from Manchester United is second placed uh, in the final season with uh, Eden Hazard in third place. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Uh, now I'm going to make part two of this experiment sometime in the future so please uh, check out my channel regularly to see when this happens. If you don't want to do that you can of course always subscribe and that way you're going to receive notifications for when I upload new videos. Don't forget to like this video, in the meantime you can also check out my social media, links will be provided in the description below. Let me know what do you think about this experiment and what would you like to see next, I would love to hear from you in the comments. Once again thank you everybody for watching, until the next time, bye!